Ladies and gentlemen, we are finally here. This is the last episode of FF7 Know the Facts. If you're new to Know the Facts, this series looks at some of the things you probably didn't know about Final Fantasy VII. Let me know in the comments which facts you liked the most and what Know the Facts you want to see next. Alrighty, let's get things started. The Honeybee Inn scenes were quite controversial. A huge amount of content was actually cut from this section prior to release. This content can be found in the data of the original Japanese release but has since been removed from all versions. I could seriously make an entire video on this but here's a nutshell version of what was going to be. Cloud could encounter Palmer, coming from one of his regular bath sessions, if you know what I mean. There was also a waiting room, a lobby and an employee's lounge which players could visit and interact with NPCs. The lobby had different girls displayed on the TV screen. Some of this text included information on the courses that they offer and had slogans like Chat with beautiful women. Welcome to my nest. How about some honey? There's even a sign on the wall that forbids entry for other brothel owners, scouts and miners. Another sign warns that poaching hostesses leads to a 100,000 gil fine. In an interview, Najima stated that at first, what took place at the inn was much more extreme and that all staff were saying, that's going too far. Here's some other interesting content that was cut for unknown reasons. An FF7 pre-release image shows the high wind on the world map. Below it, there is a house that doesn't exist in the final game. This was to be situated between Calm and the Chocobo Farm. It's unknown whether the house was put there just for this screenshot or if it was an actual location planned for the game. And we've all probably noticed the inaccessible cave. In the last screen of the sleeping forest leading to the forgotten capital, a clear ledge with a cave can be seen with a vine hanging from it. This vine is obviously for the player to climb. I mean, there's even a detour to the vine, but despite this, it can't be interacted with. By the time FF7 came around, chocobos had been around for a while, but where did the name chocobo come from? Chocobo is derived from a Japanese brand of chocolate malt ball, the Choco Ball. And uh, I seriously don't know what to say about the advert for this delicious treat. Take a look. To be completely honest, this is probably one of the catchiest tunes I've ever heard in my life. Can you imagine what my brain is going through right now while editing and hearing this track over and over again? But the craziness doesn't even stop here. Don't you worry about that. The mascot for this product is named Kuro-chan. He's a pretty strange looking bird who says Kwe, just like a chocobo. Kuro-chan somehow got his own anime series too. The international version of FF7 saw quite a few differences from the Japanese version. Here's a few of the interesting ones. Firstly, the number of available spaces for character names was increased from 6 to 9. This was to accommodate the longer names like Vincent and Sephiroth. The diamond weapon was made into a boss rather than just appearing in a cutscene. During this fight, you can steal Yuffie's Rising Sun weapon. This was previously unused in the Japanese version. Believe it or not, but the Emerald and Ruby weapon super bosses weren't present in the original Japanese version. So naturally, the guidebook Desert Rose and Earth Heart also didn't exist. Finally, the Temple of the Ancients clock puzzle removed the more complicated version that was found in the original Japanese version. International players were instead given a more simplified version from the start. However, if you failed the clock puzzle in the Japanese version three times, you did get the simplified version. Cloud and Sephiroth are very iconic video game characters. The imagery and design concepts for these characters were based off the famous samurai rivals of the late Sengoku period. These samurais are Miyamoto Musashi and Sasaki Kojiro. There's also a limited edition cold car statue of Cloud and Sephiroth's final showdown. This was modelled after a statue depicting the duel between these legendary samurai. The village of Wutai has some interesting origins. Mount Wutai is a real mountain located in China and translates to Five Plateau Mountain. This could have something to do with the five bosses that you encounter in the Wutai Pagoda. Speaking of which, all of these bosses have some interesting links to theatre. Godot's name is based off Godot, the title character from Samuel Beckett's famous play Waiting for Godot. Gorky's name is a reference to Maxim Gorky, a 19th century Russian author, playwright and political activist. Chekhov is named after Anton Chekhov, who was a Russian playwright and short story writer. 
he is considered to be among the greatest writers of short fiction in history. Stenev is short for Konstantin Stanislavsky. He was a Russian theatre practitioner who was widely recognised as an outstanding character actor. And finally there is Shake. Her name references the great William Shakespeare. He's only widely regarded as the greatest writer in the English language. The intention for all of these characters was that they would speak in a different way based on their origin, but this speech is completely missed in the English translation. Now let's take a look at the one track to rule them all, One Winged Angel. Yeah, it's incredible, but did you know that the lyrics in the original FF7 version and the Advent Children version are different? I'll play them both with their English and Latin translations. We've had the one track to rule them all, now for the one spoiler to rule them all. If you've played FF7, you may remember a certain female character dying. Here's the history behind this tragic event. Nomura stated that he was frustrated with the cliche where the protagonist loves someone very much but has to sacrifice himself and die in a dramatic fashion to express this love. He identified this happening far too often in both North American and Japanese media. Nomura and the other developers believed that in the real world things were very different. Death comes suddenly and there is no notion of good or bad. When you lose someone you love very much, you feel this big empty space and think, if I had known this was coming, I would have done things differently. In reflection, Nomura comments that the fact that fans were so offended by her sudden death probably means that we were successful with her character. If fans had simply accepted her death, that would have meant that she wasn't an effective character. Words of truth if you ask me, I don't give a shit when most characters die in games unless the awesome equipment that they have equipped dies with them. But to be fair, at least it was only Aerith. During the writing of the script, the development team were discussing the possibility of killing off nearly all of the characters with only three surviving. But this was later scrapped as they felt this would dilute the meaning of Aerith's death. This death was a staple in video game storytelling. This death was even referred to in Wreck-It Ralph. When Ralph is entering Game Central Station, graffiti can be seen spray painted on the walls near the entrance. The graffiti reads, Aerith lives. Knights of the Round is one of the most badass summons in the entire series. It also has the longest summon animation in Final Fantasy VII. It is an incredible move, so you're going to want to use it a lot, but this could take up quite a bit of your precious time. Did you know that this sequence, as with every other battle ability animation, can be skipped with the Vincent Mug glitch? As you would expect, this glitch involves Vincent using the Mug command. Whenever he does so, the next attack animation is skipped, be it the enemies or the players. The damage is still calculated as normal, even if no numbers appear. There were many Knights of the Round Table, so which ones were present in the summon animation? The final knight that makes the grand entrance and attack is none other than King Arthur. We know this because this particular knight was released as a figure as part of the first Final Fantasy creature set. The rest are just speculation, such as the second and third last night being Gawain and Lancelot due to the weapons they wield. Cup Noodle advertising was pretty damn evident in Final Fantasy XV, but this wasn't the first time that Square decided to partner with instant noodle companies. To celebrate the 30th anniversary of the FF series, Cup Noodle company Nissin created 30 limited edition forks inspired by Cloud's Ultima weapon. So how did you win one? All you had to do is purchase a special box set of the Final Fantasy themed cup noodles and then enter. It should also be noted that these can't really be used for eating as they're a massive 24 inches in length. But all the same, I would love to add one of these to my collection. That's all for the FF7 Know The Facts series. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what facts you found the most interesting. See you next time. Go ahead, go ahead.